Hello Bio4 and welcome to the structures of the thoracic cavity. So what I want you to do is to have that list in front of you so that we can go down all the bulleted structures that you need to know. And um, we start out with a very simple one here is the diaphragm. So down here, separating the thorax from the abdomen. And that's our first structure. And then we move to relative to the lungs. So relative to the lungs, we have the right lung with its superior, we call it the superior instead of the upper, the superior, the middle, and the inferior, or the upper, middle, and lower lobes. And then on the left, as you see, there is only two of them, the superior and inferior lobe or upper and lower lo uh, lobes. And that's because the heart is sort of protruding into this side and there's fewer lobes on the left side. So you want to look at parietal pleura. So we're going to take the lungs by themselves now in this different diagram. And these terms we've had before when we talk about a layer that's parietal and a layer that's visceral. Okay, so the same thing is going to happen here on the lung. Um, we had it before with the pericardium. Now we're talking about the lung, so it's going to be called pleura. So if we deflate the lung, it's actually easier to see. So I'm going to show you here with a collapsed lung, and then we'll move on to the regular lung. <clears throat> so the parietal pleura then would be this outer lining that would actually be part of the chest cavity. It's com completely going to line the chest cavity. And the visceral pleura, which is here lining the actual organ itself or the viscera. Okay, once we stretch it out into the normal lung, um, you would know that the inner layer here is visceral and the outer layer then is the parietal. And in between, there's going to be some fluid. You want that movement of the lung not to stick. You want it to be smooth, so that's sort of lubricated. The space, I'm going to backtrack a little bit, the space where the heart is found. So if I would re were to remove the heart and leave this empty area, that empty area is called the mediastinum. Okay, so here everything has been removed and um, the mediastinum then would be the area occupied by the heart. Here, the parietal pleura is vis visible, so see how it's actually going to be this outer layer that completely lines the back, the, the chest cavity. It's often um, described as, think of a balloon. So if you had a balloon that was sort of mushy, it wasn't filled with air, and you were able to put a fist inside, you would end up with two layers, correct? One that adheres onto your fist and one more outer layer. So that would be the visceral and the parietal layer of the lung it would be pleura. Really nice way of thinking about it. It helps a lot. Uh, there again is the mediastinum. Empty space because the heart has been removed. When we talk about the parietal and visceral peritoneum, that is um, moving on to the abdominal area, and you're going to have the same thing. You're going to have a liner that covers an organ very closely, or covers the intestine very closely, and that's the visceral peritoneum. And then, like that fist that you put in here, uh, what's left is this other liner that's going to line the abdomen, the abdominal cavity, and that's the parietal peritoneum. Visceral attached onto the intestine, parietal attached onto the interior of the abdominal cavity. Um, on your list, we move on to relative to the stomach. There's a lot here on the stomach. We start out with the greater and the lesser omentum. Greater lesser omentum. So attached onto the external part of the stomach is this sort of fatty apron, we call it, that sort of dangles from it. 
and that's going to be the greater omentum. This sort of extends, if I, if I were to take my pen here, you know, this would extend out like this. So continue on, and it actually forms a coat over some of the intestine. So very large, big apron is the greater omentum. And the lesser omentum is attached onto this lesser curvature. So think of this as a, a little bean. The outside of the bean is the greater curvature. The inside here of the black bean or whatever is the um, lesser curvature and on it would be yet another sort of fatty thin layer apron like called the omentum okay on the heart itself we're going to distinguish different locations so the first one we want to talk about is the cardiac region and the cardiac region is around here this is where this is the esophagus so it's where the entryway from the esophagus is that's the cardiac region. And um, next we move on to the fundus. And the fundus would be this region here, sort of above the region of the entryway. Do you notice that this would enter this way? And then we see, yet, I could extend this even bigger. All this would be the region of the fundus, which means above that of the cardiac region. Then the major part, of the stomach would be the body. And then we come to where the exit is of the contents of the stomach. So we're exiting around here, correct? So if we're exiting here into the small intestine, then that exit region there is the pyloric region. Um, that we don't need to know. This one, the antrum, the pyloric canal, uh, the pylorus is where the sphincter is. The sphincter is what's going to regulate when food moves from the stomach into the duodenum, which is the first section of the small intestine. On your list, again, you have the greater curvature and the lesser curvature. We already spoke of them because of the greater omentum and the lesser omentum. Okay. Um, this is a nicer picture that shows the extension of that fatty greater omentum. And here, a tiny little bit of the lesser omentum. We've got the fundus, the body, the pylorus. This is a really nice picture for this. Okay, relative to the small intestine. So let me backtrack a little bit. We're moving on now. We, we're leaving the duodenum here. And if I were to fold this great ornamentum up, we get to the intestine. And in the intestine, this is the extension of the intestine. There is this fabric here full of vessels. Do you notice? Because remember, this is where absorption is going to happen. So we're going to need a lot of irrigation. So this second fabric here that seemingly connects the different loops of the intestine and are full of arteries are called the mesentery. That's the mesentery. We call it the stained glass window because you hold it up to the light and it's sort of see-through with those arteries. It looks very pretty. That is the mesentery. So that picture of the mesentery would have been you know, attachments that go like this, because we draw it so separate and clean, but really mesentery is going to attach the um, regions of the small intestine. Okay, so if we have to talk about the different sections of the small intestine, here, look, stomach coming out, this first region here, duodenum, the first little curve here, Duodenum or duodenum means 12 fingers. So if you put your hands together flat, that's 10 fingers plus two more. That's the length of the duodenum. Once that is over, let's say it ended around there, then we begin the second section here, and that is the jejunum. <clears throat> so the jejunum 
is going to continue on like this until we get to the ilium. I'm trying to see on your list if I put it on. So it says jejunum slash ilium. So we're going to do jejunum, jejunum. And at some point, let's just pretend it's here. It's going to become the ilium and continue on until it reaches the large intestine. Um, there is no way of telling where that exactly is unless you look at it microscopically. So if I were to test you on this, this is easy to know that this is the duodenum. Very close to the location here of the duodenum here, I'm going to call this jejunum. And then very late here, I'm going to call this the ilium. Okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to avoid this fuzzy area that I'm not quite sure whether it's still jejunum or already ilium. Okay, so then this would continue on and then this would feed into what is large intestine. So here we have large intestine doing these loops like this coming down and then finally out. Okay, um, I also wanted to show you because this is a very good picture here of the pancreas. So the pancreas is located here under the stomach and very close here to the duodenum. It sort of sits nestled in there. Okay, but we'll come back to that later. Okay, so I have my duodenum, my jejunum, my ilium, and the ilium then, this is going to feed in now to this region here that's the cecum. The cecum is this dead end area of the large intestine kind of where we think it begins, okay? And you're going to have then the ascending colon, and then it's going to do a right turn. So it's not called a right turn, it's called the right colic flexure. And then it's going to be the transverse colon here, and then it's going to take a turn. Not a turn, it's called the left colic flexure. Then the descending colon, and then the sigmoid, notice how this is kind of like an S, the sigmoid colon coming in to the rectum. And then final portion here is anus. Okay. So to get those, you might have to stop and listen to the video again. Um, the other thing I wanted to uh, show you on this diagram is up here in the liver then, the situation of where the liver is and the gallbladder, but we will come back to those later. Also, um, extending out um, from the cecum, let me go in order better, the haustra is these uh, regions of here let me go haustra so this kind of bulginess of the large intestine or the haustra the singular is called haustrum and in the middle you see this sort of line that forms all the way through them and that's called the tinea coli now attached onto these are often little dangling fat and I'll, I'll show you in another picture and these little dangling fat appendages are called epiploic appendages epiploic appendages and then the fabulous appendix so your appendix here is sort of a dead end of a dead end. So you can see why infection is something that can happen here readily because this might not be moving. You know, this is all moving in one direction and will exit the body. But if you, this is already somewhat of a dead end that then ends in a second dead end and uh, this can become infected and that's why people often will have this removed. Uh, we don't know what the function is. Some people uh, hypothesize that the function is to actually seed this area with bacteria because we do need bacteria in that area to help us digest those final portions of food that have 
a bit of exiting and uh, this is sort of a repository for that so maybe that was the function I'm going to stop this video now we'll move on later to relative to the liver thanks for joining bye